오늘 읽으실 하나님의 말씀은 Today's passage is Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 through 27. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26 27 two verses let's read together. 하시겠습니다. 시작. He said if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pay attention to His commands and keep all His decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where there were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. Amen. God our Father, today we have this m o n g s a m p o retreat. We thank you for granting us this retreat in love. We try our best to gather here all together. Please bless those who are on the way. When we come here, we have this expectation and love for this grace and blessings. Please help. Grant us this grace and, and blessing. And also for these people who gave you Thanksgiving offerings, please bless them. Bless Yi Sunja and her family. Cho Suwa and her family. Min Song Ah and her family. Jung Jung Yi and her family. Kim Jung and her family. Lee j u n g j a and her family, Kim b y u n g j u and his family, Lee j o n g w o and his family, Lee c h u n g m a n and his family, Lee j o n g w o and his family, Park y o n g s u and his family, Kim Eun y o n g and her family, Kim Eun Moon and his family, Lee j e n g and his family, Che m u n a k and his family, o s a n g g u n and his family, Cho g y u b e k and his family, j o n b o k s u n and her family, Kim j i n y o k and his family, Lee o u n g j a and her family, Che t e w o and his family, Pae c h u n g y u and his family, Lee y o u n g k y u n g and her family, Che g o n w o and his family, Song b o n g y e o l and his family, So j o n w o and his family. And also, there are so many people who brought Thanksgiving offering. Please remember each and every of them and grant them your grace. Please anoint your servants' lips and speak through them. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Those of you who give thanks to God, I bless the grace of God be with you in the name of Jesus. This year, our retreat title is Jesus Christ Healing and the Holy Sign. This is the title that I used 1960s when I hold crusade meeting, crusade uh, evangel evangelism crusade, and this is the same title. All of us, none of us, should become onlooker. The Bible, in the Bible, said Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing. The forceful men can lay hold of it. You can't just sit there and expect to receive anything. The disciple of John the Baptist said, asked, are you the one who is coming or should we wait for another? Because they didn't know if he was the one they were waiting for. But Jesus didn't say, 
I am he. But said, you go to John and tell him what you hear, what you saw. The deaf hear, the blind can see, the crippled walk, the dead rise, the demon expelled and leprosy heal, the poor receive, hear the gospel. Now you see and heard, whatever you see and hear, you tell him. Jesus Christ, when we say gospel, people think it's just a word, just a, a gossip. It's not. It's not a gossip. It, this, this is what you see and hear and experience. What you have received, these you testify. What you hear and see, go tell John, said Jesus. And he added, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been forcefully advancing. The forceful men can lay hold of it. Let's all say, the kingdom of God the forceful men will lay hold of it from the days of John the Baptist. Before then, the law was or, uh, fleshly ordinances, so with a conscience of faith, because they didn't know anything about spirituality. They thought the flesh was their soul. With their flesh, they met God and they receive blessings and powers on their flesh. But they didn't know about spiritual world. But from the moment, from the days of John the Baptist, they hear about the kingdom of heaven. That which is spiritual world. They haven't. They did not know about spiritual world because in the Old Testament there is no such world, such such word as heaven. They were longing for a country that is ruled by God, country ruled by God in this world, like the dynasty of David, the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of Jerusalem the country that is ruled by God in this world. Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing. From then on, they, start, they started this spiritual world. John said, repent and the kingdom of God is near. But the, Jeru the people in Jerusalem, they hear that and they understood that uh, since uh, Israelites were oppressed by many countries like Babylon, Persia, Greek, and Romans, for hundred e hundreds of years they were occupied by other countries. They could not restore their own country. So between Old Testament and New Testament, there were 400 years during which they could not have their own country. So even though they were living in that land, they were oppressed by other country. So they were always longing for the restor restoration of their own country, which is governed by God the country ruled by God. They were longing for that country because they didn't know about spiritual world. John the Baptist said, repent, the kingdom of God is near. And he was referring to the spiritual world. This, he did not refer to this physical world. But then these people, the Jewish people, even though they met Jesus and learned from Jesus for 33 years, they still asked to Jesus, when uh, is our country be restored? And Jesus said, do not leave Jerusalem and wait 
You will receive the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you will receive the power. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the, the earth. Jesus was talking about this spiritual world, but people were thinking about this uh, physical kingdom they had on... They long for this physical kingdom. So there was um, difference. There was different difference of, of idea. From the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God was forcefully advancing. They have not heard about this spiritual world, but from John the Baptist, they began to hear about this spiritual world. This spiritual world, the kingdom of God, only the forceful men can lay hold of it. So this door had opened. This door to the kingdom of God was open. So people repent and come near to the kingdom of God. They met Jesus who was the door to the kingdom of God. Jesus is the door to the kingdom, a uh, way to the kingdom, the only truth to the kingdom. And they get to meet Jesus. And that's why from the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of heaven uh, was forcefully advancing. Forceful men can lay hold of it. It doesn't mean that the forceful men will attack the heaven and, and rob the heaven. Um, the people from North Korea, they come to South Korea for freedom. Uh, in order to come to South Korea, they uh, escape to China and suffer for a long time and finally come come to South Korea. Sometimes they escape to China and pass all the routes and sometimes they go to Myanmar and suffer for a long time. It takes years. If 10 people left uh, North Korea, then only half of them make it to South Korea. They suffer so much. Likewise, you and I, for this spiritual world, we have to seek. We have to seek. But nowadays, people, just like the Jewish people back then, they just sit there and they don't really know if they are seeking, they should seek for the spiritual world or things of this world. They are confused. So the speaker, the preachers, preachers, they don't know how to preach about the spiritual world. That's why they use all the scripts. Uh, to make examples and parables to explain about the way of the world. So people uh, fall into the prosperity seeking faith. The prosperity is like a shadow that follows the object. Shadow, like a, a shadow of object, it follows naturally. If you seek God, the, the seek God's kingdom, the prosperity, the prosperity will follow you. I want, I really want you to know about the spiritual world and, and know the happiness of the spiritual world. I really want you to know the happiness of spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual happiness. Seeking what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, these are all belong to this world, all about prosperity in this world, but do not seek those but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness then everything will come following you matthew chapter 6 says so so what to eat what to drink what to wear do not seek those if you only seek those there's nothing you you gain from god even the flowers in the field god clothed them does the birds in the sky, God feed them. What more for you? If you are born in this world, you can make it. You can make a living. Some people commit suicide, but if they, if they with the courage to, to commit suicide, 
if they try living in this world, they can succeed in this world. Everyone can make a living. So do not worry so much about what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, but seek first God's kingdom. Israel people, when they think about the kingdom of God, they thought about the country governed by God, country ruled by God in this world. But we seek this spiritual kingdom, heaven, spiritual kingdom, where our soul will enter, where our, our soul can receive all the provisions from. Where our soul become the citizen and receive the glory of the kingdom. There is difference between this influential country, the big powerful country, and this small country with no power. The long time ago, U.S. citizen. I don't. I can't remember the name of the country. I think it probably was Malaysia. He got lost. This person, U.S. citizen, got lost. In order to find him, uh, American government sent armies of soldiers, airplanes, and ships had been deployed in order to find this person because he is U.S. citizen. Still, if U.S. citizen is hurt, then the, the, the government would react right away. Once in Singapore, there was an American person who did something wrong and he was convicted to punishment, uh, 10 lashes of flogging. This 10 lashes of flogging was so severe, he, he, a uh, man can die or become permanently disabled. It's a flogging. Very severe uh, flogging. Ten lashes of flogging can kill a person, breaking the bones and stripped strip of flashes. Very severe punishment. But President of, of America, President of USA, came, uh, pleaded with the Prime Minister of Singapore to reduce down the severity of the punishment. And as far as I can remember, I think it, the lashes been reduced down by one. But he has more chance to live. That's how much this uh, country uh, struggled to protect its own uh, citizens. But these small countries with no power, they cannot help their, their citizens. If we belong to God's kingdom, God will protect us. God will care for us like that. Our believers, believers, sometimes they pray, oh God, help me. And in their heart, God will not help me. I am nothing. If you look down from airplane, it's, you can hardly see houses, let alone people. That's how insignificant people are. The Bible says we are like dust. How could how could God know us who are so significant, insignificant? But you have to remember Isaiah 53, verse 1 and below. Jesus Christ came. What did he do? He experienced the life of man. In Hebrew, chapter 2, 9, he became man to taste death. Man's life starts from the womb. The moment man is conceived in the womb, they are going towards death. Some, some die as soon as birth. Some die until, uh, some live until 70, 80 years. But everyone dies. Everyone lives towards death. 
you are getting closer, closer to death. Jesus came to taste death. When Jesus, he was conceived in the womb, in the womb of the mother, he was. It was. He experienced this very small status, state of human being. You cannot see with your eyes. Even then, God cared for him. God cared for him, and God saw human being. Even they were so small. Jesus experienced from then, and he experienced the, the birth, and he grew up. He experienced all the persecutions and poverty, sicknesses, and discrimination. He experienced all that. He knows the sufferings of men. All the sufferings of men he have experienced. He endured sickness. He had experienced everything men can experience. He was like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He knows us. He knows us. The fetus in the womb. The moment the fetus was created in the womb, God was there. God knows. Jacob and Asa, when they were in the womb, God already know them. God already know uh, what will happen to them. God sees everything. So you 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 must not say, "I am so inferior." God will not see me. God will not know me. You feel inferior and. Say, oh, only God. God cares for the pastor, and God does not care for me. That's not true. I am only a guide. I am only a guide. There are prophets in the Bible. The prophets means guides, guides, guides to the road. I am only a guide to show the the way. I am like a shepherd who feeds the sheep. If the sheep doesn't eat, what can I do? I cannot force them to eat. Now you have to listen carefully, each one of you. God remembers you. God knows you. You have to acknowledge that first. People don't have the power. Don't have. Don't see the signs because they do not honor God. They do not acknowledge God. In Matthew chapter six, do not keep on babbling like pagans when you pray. They keep. They think they will be heard because of their many words. God knows what you need. God already knows what you need. When we were in the womb, we didn't know. But once I became a father, when I heard that my my wife was pregnant. I worried what what to feed her. After Crusade, I when I come home, I wanted to bring food for her. I loved her, but also I loved the baby inside of her. I wanted to feed the baby. I wanted to feed the baby. I wanted to bring food for her. Aren't all fathers are like that? The pregnant woman would say, "Oh, I want to eat that. I want to eat that. Uh, I don't want to eat this. I don't. I want to eat that. I lost appetite." The pregnant women, their appetite changes, keep changes. They say they want to eat that, and all of a sudden they don't want to eat that, and they feel. Uh, Vomiting and they don't want to eat it, but they want to eat something else. That's because the baby don't want to eat it. If the baby doesn't want it, then the mother will feel vomiting. So the baby, what the baby needs, somehow through a nervous system or a conscience, demands what the baby needs. So.
The mother gets very capricious in appetite. The family would worry for her because she cannot eat. Even though we were, when we were very small, God remembers us and feeds us. You have to acknowledge this. Some people, as if the sickness is some kind of enti entitlement, they would say, "Oh, I am sick. I am sick." So please uh, pray for me. I told them, I tell them, listen to the word. But they would say, oh, I know everything. Just pray for me. They think that the sickness is some kind of entitlement. Do you, if you think the sickness is entitlement, raise your hand. I'm first. I'm first. I need to receive the prayer first. They would say. The sick people sometimes they feel they have entitlement. God calls the sick people. Just as the uh, in the in our passage, God is the healer. Jehovah Rapha in Hebrew. God is healer. He is the only one who he who heals. He is the the only one who heals. This healing, healing God. This healing doctors. Who do they wait for? They they're waiting for the patients. They're waiting for the patients. And when there are a lot of patients, would doctor be happy or be annoyed? If there's no patients, the doctor worry. And if they there are a lot, there's a lot of uh, patients there. The doctor is happy because he's making a lot of money that day. He welcomes for patients. Doctors wait for patients. The Bible also says, "Sick the sick needs doctor. The healthy doesn't need doctors." Likewise, when God said, I am healer, we are sick and come before God. God welcomes them. But spiritually, the more serious problem is the sickness in your soul. The physical sickness probably reduce down uh, the lifespan. If you were to live until 80, you probably live shorter if you have a sickness. It's just a matter of some time uh, living in this world. But spiritual world, it is eternal. Your spirit lives forever, but this spirit, if your spirit is sick, if your spirit is sick, so you have this uh, eternal uh, death, that's more serious problem. But people nowadays are uh, not mindful of spiritual thing. That's why they cannot meet God. You have to understand this. So it's okay if you're not sick, and it's okay if you are sick. But since you are before this doctor, you must have reason to see the doctor. When you come before the doctor, you must have a reason. There was someone who is labor, about to labor a baby. Before uh, the previous two baby, she had it by all by herself, but she wanted to have this third baby in the clinic, and she was looking for a clinic, and she found a clinic, dentist clinic. And since it was also a clinic, she just went in there. She was having a labor. She was in a hurry, so she went in the clinic. And inside the office, there was a chair, with all the gadgets. Oh, maybe in the clinic you have a baby on a chair. So she sat on the chair, and there was a doctor with this round thing on the forehead. And the doctor said, Open your mouth. And she thought, Oh, in the clinic you have a baby through your mouth. 
You have a baby through your mouth, so she opened her mouth all with all might, all her might. Now there are a lot of people who think that way. So there is misunderstanding. Don't go to dentist clinic to have a baby. If you go to dentist uh, clinic, you will think that you will have a baby through your mouth. So the clinic, you, cl there are many different kinds of clinic. You have to go to the proper one. God said He is the healer. Now you say, oh, I'm not sick. So you go there. You are sick, you go there. You go to see him. But there is more serious problem. Jesus said, your sin is your, your sin is forgiven and take your mat and walk. That's just like that. The spiritual sickness is more serious. It's more important. You have to deal with it first. Like I uh, preached last week, God gave us faith. Jesus gave us faith first. Peace be with you. That's the faith the Lord gave us. Do you have the peace? Or do you have the peace that the Lord gave us? Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you have the spirituality God gave you? Do you have the power to forgive sins? But he didn't say about healing sick. But Lord commanded his disciples, all people to heal. Uh, forgiving sin includes healing as well. In terms of sickness, even though you're, you don't have a physical sickness, that's okay. But you have to admit that you have a sickness in your spirit and come before God. Everybody uh, clench your fists and say, My soul, seek God. My soul, seek God. My soul, seek God. When I uh, had ministry in the countryside and in Seoul, when my church members were not many, like 100 or 200, I met them almost every day and counseled them each one of them so I knew what their problem was if I I could see if they understood all these words or not so but now people would say oh I'm not sick so I will see if people get healed or not do not have that kind of attitude you yourself also must involve Jesus said, you heal, you heal the sick. To the disciples, he commanded, heal the sick. You expel demons, heal the leprosy, you heal the sick. So all of us have received this command. We're not, none of us are onlookers. We all must have this gift. We have this command. But now, whether you are healed or not, whether you have sickness or not, you all receive this command from the Lord. We, I bless you to receive this uh, doctor's license. What license? Doctor's license. From the Lord Jesus Christ, you must receive this power to heal, the appointment to heal. So when we say the healing, uh, in Corinthians, First Corinthians, there is a gift of the Holy Spirit. There are many gifts, speaking tongue, prophecy, everything, the nine of them were the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but only as for the healing, it says healing, uh, gift of healing, gift of healing. Healing is gift like all other gifts. The healing gift, gift means granted, granted as, as gift, granted. God is working together. In the original script, it says God is working together. 
So when Jesus healed, God's power was with him. That's why you need to pray. This kind come out only by prayers when God work with you. Mark 16, 20, it says, Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed His word by the signs that, that accompanied it. So, uh, as for healing, God is working together. You have to listen. You have to listen carefully. For healings, God is working together. This is gift of healing. Uh, in Joseon Dynasty, long time ago, there were the kings would grant medicines to the people. Uh, these medicines were granted by the king. And since this is just a bowl of soup, like black bowl of soup, it's a medicine. So people don't know what this medicine is for, even though they don't know what it is, what kind of medicine that is. Since it was granted, since it was granted by king, they just drank it. They just drank it as soon as they received it from the king. Just like that, uh, the healing, the gift of healing is a gift. It was granted by God and God is working with, with the power. Someone says uh, they received the power of healing. But still, if God is not working with him, he cannot heal anybody. Even though God is working with you, if you do not obey, the power does not uh, come out. Even though God is working with you and you are working with God, if the person who is sick, he doesn't, if he doesn't have the faith, cannot be healed. So before doctors, if the doctors ask what's your problem, then you have to show your stomach. If you say, oh, I'm so embarrassed, I don't want to show it to you, it's sexual harassment, I don't want to show it to you, then you cannot be healed. The doctors cannot help you. If doctor, if the doctor want to wanna see it, you have to show it to them. Like that, you have to work together. So the healing, the gift of healing, in China, in, in Korea, we translated this gift of healing as God's power. We call it God's power because God is healing. Before God, when you come before God, you must acknowledge that you have the right to be loved. You have right to receive the power from Him. You have right to be comforted by Him. You have to acknowledge that. But if you say, oh, I'm inferior, I am, I am unlearned, I am ignorant, so please pray for me. Pray for me. Please say for me. But you rely on Him directly. You pray to Him directly. I bless you to rely on God. God said, when God said, I am the healer, He did not say to a specific uh, person, but to everyone. To everyone, He said He is the healer. And one more thing, I always say this on the Lord's Day. The concept of God, when you are, when you, when you say God, you think of the God the Father. God the Father, no one can see. No one has seen the Father. God the Father, you cannot know Him, but by Jesus Christ, whom He has sent, we can see God the Father. But when we say God, it does not refer to God the Father. 
God the Father, whether you are sick or not, everyone must worship the Father. He is the one who to be served, to be, re- to be glorified. To the Father, we must give worship service, we must worship, we must glorify. We must give offerings, and we must dev- devote ourselves to Him. To the Father, we, we only worship Him. Let's all say, my soul, worship the Father. We do not serve Jesus. We serve the Father. Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve, to give my life to many. That's what he said. But people say, oh, I am sick because I did not serve Jesus properly. Jesus never said he came to be served. He said he came to serve. You misunderstand about Jesus. That's why you fall into temptation and blaspheme Jesus. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus did not come to be served. Even though you find a hymn song say like that, it's wrong. Jesus, let's all say, Jesus did not come to be served. Jesus did not come to be served. but to serve us, to serve. You must concentrate. You must concentrate. Jesus came to serve. So what comes next to Jesus? Christ. Christ means anointed and sent. He came with this appointment, which is Christ. Christ is not a name of a person. Christ is the appointment. Christ is appointment. Appointment to save us. So, do you believe Jesus as Christ? Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve. Do you believe that God, uh, Jesus was sent by God? Now speak to the person next to you. Speak to the person. Explain to the person next to you. Explain to the person next to you and see if you understood. That's it? That's that's so short. If you don't know, you get confused for the rest of your life. You will wander, you will be confused if you don't know this. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Concentrate, you have to concentrate. Who is Jesus? Louder, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Christ. Jesus is Christ. Do you believe this? When you are baptized, do you believe Jesus as Christ? And you say, Amen. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe Jesus as Christ? Do you believe in Jesus? Means do you believe Jesus as Christ? If you believe Jesus is Christ, say Amen. If you believe Jesus is uh, Christ who healed you, He was anointed. He was anointed just as the prophet's been anointed. God chose Him and sent Him to us. God sent him to heal us. God sent him to save the sinner. Those who are, to, who are doomed to death, to save those God, Jesus was sent. You believe in Jesus, and what do you, how do you believe him? And don't you say, I believe because my friend believes. I believe because my parents believed. But I don't know what to believe. If you believe, um, you must know what you believe. Jesus is the name of God. And this name, the Son 
was, who is Jesus Christ? Louder, louder. Oh, pastor's sermon is too long. Don't say that. But who is Jesus? Jesus, louder. Jesus is, Jesus is Christ. Jesus is Christ. He is Christ. He came as Christ. He gave us all this inspiration and experience. Redemption is the, the greatest inspiration. He cleansed us. He atoned us. He saved us from sin. And for this, He was sent. He is the Christ. Let's say Jesus is Christ. Five times, Jesus is Christ. 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 When we say to other people, believe in Jesus, and they will ask, why do you believe in Jesus? They say, oh, I believe in Buddha, because they don't know. Jesus is the one who is sent by the living God to save you. He sent him to you. So God sent him to you. He was he is the Christ who is sent by God. Who is Jesus? You believe in Jesus. Who is Jesus? Jesus is Christ. What? He saved me? He saved you. He is the only one who can save me. So God means one and only. One and only. God means one and only. God is the one who can do. Only He can do. No one else can do. He can do things that no one else can do. Who can save you? No one can save you. Only God can save you, raise you from the dead, save you from the sin, save you from the hell, give us eternal life. God is the only one who can save us. If you say there is another one who can save you, you do not believe in God. Only God, who is this God? Who is this God then? Jesus, Jesus. Who is this God? Jesus, who is God? Who is God? Who is God? Jesus, who is God? Jesus, who is it that can save you? Jesus, just as you said, the one who can save you, the only, the one and only one who can save you, because Jesus is the one and only. Who is he? God. He is God because he's the his his one and only. Who can save you? Jesus. Who can save you? Jesus. Who can save you? Jesus. Is there any? Is there one or two who can save you? Is he is he one and only, or is there anyone else? Is there many who can save you? One and only. There is only one and only who can save you. That's why he is God. Now explain this to the person next to you. You have to explain this. You need to be able to explain this. Then you can have the power. Now explain to the person next to you. Do not pretend you know. Explain this to the person next to you. More and more. Just as you are sowing something, when you sow, when you use the sewing machine, you don't just do it. I watch my mother sewing very carefully, and I realize that there is way, there is a specific way to sew. Many people, uh, young people, even though they are very smart, they cannot make this traditional Korean sock. They cannot even flip it inside out. 
It's amazing how they make this Korean traditional socks. And this upper shirt, the Korean traditional upper, upper shirt, um, long time ago, mothers used to make clothes for all the members of the household, children's husband and parents, grandparents. They make clothes for every member of the family. She would make the fabric and treat the fabric, make patterns and sew them together. It's amazing what mothers used to do. The mothers of all time, they're amazing. And when they sew, they start from here, the back of the neck, the center of the back. They sew uh, from from there. If they start from anywhere else, it does not uh, balance. It will the shirt will not be balanced. You have to sew from the back of the center. If you don't. If you have not so, you don't know what I'm saying. Those of you who have, have made a shirt, Korean traditional shirt, am I right? You have to start from the back of the center. You cannot start, start from underarm or anywhere else. It, won't, it just won't make it. When you start from the center of the back, it will all come together in balance. Just like that, we have to start from here. We you have to start our faith life from knowing who Christ is, who Jesus is. The persecutors, they slept, the soldiers, they slept, struck Jesus and say, are you Christ? Are you Christ? If you are Christ, tell me. If you are Christ, save yourself. Je, the Jesus is the name and Christ is the appointment. You have to know this. You have to know this and start from this. You say Jesus is your Christ. Christ means Christ in another word. What is it? In another word? Christ in another word. Who is this Christ? God. God. Because He is one and only. Because He is one and only. He is God. Do you understand? Do you understand? I am the healer. I am the Lord who heals you. In another word, Christ. It's the same meaning. I am God. So, the reason you cannot hear my word, said Jesus, the reason you cannot see the glory, see my glory, what is the reason? You cannot see the blood of Jesus. Since you cannot see the blood of Jesus, you cannot see Jesus, you cannot see God, you cannot hear the word of God. Before the Holy Spirit came, before even before we believed in believe the gospel, even before we know God, what did He do in Jerusalem? He shed His blood. Jesus came as Christ in this world, and the greatest thing He did was crucifixion. He died on the cross. Dying on the cross, shedding his blood. He said, I came to die. I came to taste death. Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Without the shedding of the blood, there is no forgiveness. So, the first thing he did as Christ in order to forgive us, in order to atone us, redeem us, he shed his blood. You cannot transcend this. Uh, just as in the book I wrote, God who does not transcend, you must not transcend this. There are people with all kinds of sicknesses. When I hold this evangel evangelism crusade, once I, I met this guy, 
almost dying, who had cancer. But after he he after he hear the word, he he got up and he went out to evangelize. He cleaned the crusade because when as we as he hear the word, all this miracle, all this sign happened to him. So you have to understand the order. The first thing he came, what he what did he do? He shed his blood. He shed his precious blood. He shed the precious blood. He gave this precious blood to us. Without this blood, nothing can be done. The, nothing can be done through this blood of Jesus. No one can enter the kingdom of God without this blood of Jesus. Hebrew chapter 10. 19. The, since we have confidence to enter the most high place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is His body, we enter heaven through the blood. This week and the last week for two weeks, if you attend this meeting and hear the word, you will become a powerful disciples. During the crusade, the people, when they hear this word, they become powerful, spiritually powerful, become evangel evangelizer, and they work. They manifest so much power, just like me. So first, let's sing our hymn, 184. What can atone me? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This, you have to have this experience about the blood of Jesus. You must, um, those of you who are sick, who have physical sickness, spiritual sickness, those who want to have the power of healing, those, those of you who want to be anointed by God and used by God, sing this hymn song. This is our title, 184. This is our title, Hymn. Our main, main passage.
says, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His eyes, if you pay attention to my His command and keep all His decrees, I will bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. What does it say in front? Pay attention to His commands. If you do not keep His command, you become sinner. If you do not obey the word of God, you become sinner. Sinners cannot do anything. Sinners cannot receive comforts from God. Sinners cannot achieve, cannot, cannot fulfill anything before God. That's why you have to, you have to deal with this. The word of God, the law, in the Old Testament was the righteousness. The word of God is righteousness. So the law was righteousness. Unless you receive the righteousness, unless you have the righteousness, you cannot do anything. You must not commit sin. If you have committed sin, you must repent. None of us are sinless. We are sinners, but through the blood of Jesus, we are saved from sin. We are set free from the sin. You must believe this and become holy in, in Jesus' name. And you must have this faith that you became saint. We, you become sinless. You have to have the confidence. Our pastors will help you. The most important things, we will deal with them one by one. Tonight, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus, we are saved. We need to have this assurance that we are saved. We, you are not saved because you came to Seoul Songdak Church, but you are saved through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Now kneel down, kneel down, everyone kneel down, and we will pray with all our heart. With all our heart, we will pray. With all our heart, we will pray to God. The blood of Jesus, you must see only the blood of Jesus. Now let, let us all pray together with all your heart in order to receive the power, in order to be healed, in order to be saved. Lord, Lord, please give us the faith to rely on the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, we have forgiven. We have become holy by believing the blood of Jesus. Lord, we have received the salvation by the blood of Jesus. Please give us the assurance and fill us by the Holy Spirit.
담대히 나가는 거룩한 영혼들이 될수 있도록 인도하시고 역사하여 주시옵소서 세상에 어떤 것이 When we pray again, for your soul, for your soul to become holy by the blood of Jesus, let us pray again. Your soul to become holy by the blood of Jesus. Your soul become holy by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, the by, by the blood of the Lord. Your soul become holy by the blood of the Lord. 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 Do not think of your physical body. Your soul is more important. You have sickness on, on your body. It's you can put it put aside. But pray that your soul become holy. Your soul become cleansed by the blood of Jesus. The blood of the Lord, blood of the Lord. The blood of the Lord, blood of the Lord. The power of blood of the Lord. The power of the blood of the Lord. Power of the blood of the Lord. The, during the Passover, when they put the blood on the door frame, all their family were saved by the blood of the Lord, the power of the Lord's blood. I bless it's filled in your family. Your family become holy by the blood of, of the Lord. Your physical sickness, the sickness in your family, I pr let us pray that ye, all the sickness be Be healed by the blood of by by the blood of the Lord.
with each other, with the person next to you, to hold on to each other and pray for each other. Pray for each other so that we can be filled with the power, the blood of the, the power of the blood of the word can manifest it to each other. God our Father, I pray that they can be filled with the power of the blood of Jesus and they become holy by the blood of Jesus and all the sickness be apart from them, all the darkness be, be, uh, become left and, and they become forgiven their, blood, uh, their sin. Let us sing 184 one more time. When we pray again, Jesus is Christ. Jesus is Christ. 
Jesus is my Christ. Jesus is our Lord. Jesus is our Christ. He was sent by God to us. He is the Christ. It has to be your confession. It let us pray.